Hello and welcome to Infinity. This is going to be a longer than usual video because I'm going to explain how frequency separation works in detail. It's going to include a little bit of maths, but don't worry, it's not too much. And if your eyes glaze over, don't worry about that bit because there are other demonstrations of what's happening. So let's start off. And the first principle that we're going to have here is we got a picture. Assume this is a picture of anything. This is a very simple one to, to illustrate it. So we take this picture and if I control J to duplicate it, so I've got now I've got two layers. I take to the bottom layer and I hit control I to invert it. So I turn off the top layer, you can see that now instead of red and green, it's gone to cyan and magenta. Now then what I'm going to do is go to the top layer and I'm going to turn down the opacity of this. So as I turn this down, you see more and more of the layer underneath. So I get down, when I've got to 80% here, I've got effectively 80% of the top layer, but you're seeing then 20% of the bottom layer. And so I keep going down and down and down until I get to, beam 50% where it all when it goes grey, the circle disappears. That's got got half the top layer and half the bottom layer. And it all goes grey because effectively you've got half of one and half the other. You've got half a positive, half a negative. They cancel each other out and we meet in the middle of grey. If I go down, now the bottom one becomes dominant and you start to see more and more of the bottom one. Yeah, so if you're around about 20% here, you've got 80% of the bottom one and 20% of the top one. So, that's the puzzle of that. And what is useful about this is that it's grey, and that mid-grey is a useful thing to get because when you use the contrast blend modes, such as overlay and linear light, then it effectively becomes transparent, so only other things show through. So, let's have a look at what we're doing there. So this was, we took a layer here and we inverted it and we got that. So if I take orange and I invert it, I get this blue. And what this is happening here, if you're a mathematician, you can say, hang on, we're inverting means one over x. In this situation, in, in this stuff, in video editing, photo editing, it means taking one minus. You get a kind of inverse. And it's because if I got 100% of the possibility of, of the, that colour, if I got x is this amount, then this bit up here is one minus x, because one is 100%, because 100% 100 is 100 over 100, which is one. I then take this one which is the top layer <coughs> and I bring it down to 50% opacity so this is the turning down opacity so I've now got mathematically x over 2 so half x I then take that half x there when I've got that half x on the top layer on the layer underneath I've got 1 minus x here which is the the layer underneath the inverted layer but half of it, so it's divided by two. And this comes out to a half if you do the math. It's like this. x over two plus one minus x over two, which is this plus this. Because they both got twos on the denominator, you can put the two on the denominator there and just add the tops. So it's ed, x, the numerators, x plus one minus x, x plus one minus x. The x's disappear, x minus x is nothing, leaves you one over two. And the colour half means grey, which means it's always going to be grey. Yeah, because this is applied in the editor to red, green and blue. So you've got half green, half red, half blue, gives you automatically that mid-grey. Let's do a reminder of how we do a uh, frequency separation manually, because we're going to go through it in, in detail afterwards. So I take a layer like this, hit Control J to duplicate it, Turn off the top layer for now, then on the bottom layer, I'm going to put a blur on it, a Gaussian blur, and then I turn this up the normal amount, 
until it's kind of you're losing the detail. So that will do for that. Now that's going to be my blur layer, my low frequency layer effectively. Then control J, I duplicate it. Then control I, I invert it. So this is the inverted version. So now I put on the top layer above that and I turn this down and down and down and this is where it goes towards grey. And I get to 50% and it's grey but you can see this other shape here. So what's going on there? Let's go back to the original one to have a look at this. So if I got this top layer which is red and we had this take that off for a moment and the bottom layer which is the inverted one. If I'm going to paint on that inverted layer so let's take a paintbrush and I'll paint a colour on here. Here so now I've made the bottom layer different like I've got in frequency separation I've got the bottom layer is blurred and the top layer is not. Now if I go back up to the top layer turn it on turn down the opacity to 50% and as I go everything goes grey except for this bit that I've drawn and this is the bit on the bottom layer that's different that's standing out and this is the blurred bit and this is how you get the where the edges are because the blur only appears on the edges and this is the principle that's being used. So let's have a look at that in that simpler terms. So I take a layer here which is my original and I blur it. And that blurs along the line here because if you try to apply a blur in the middle of a solid colour you don't see any difference. So it's only locally blurred there. <coughs> then I take that blurred layer, copy of it, and I invert it. And that was that middle layer. And so now the orange goes to blue and the cyan goes to that red colour and the blur is in between. Then I take the original layer again, which was the top layer now, and I bring it down to 50% opacity, so this is now transparent. And then I combine these two here, like this, and because this one is now 50% transparent and sits on top of this, I can see 50% of one and 50% of the other. And this is where I get that grey where they are. The solid colour is one above there, the positive and the negative. But where they're different, I'm getting this effect down here. And so it's getting that line there because there's this line effectively here and the blur around it. So effectively I've done an edge detection in order to find this edge. And this is a very useful principle. Right, last page now on this, and so this is to look at what we do the next step, which is the, that where we turn the top layer uh, and, the, and the next layer, you group them together, so we get that grey layer, the high frequency layer, we've got the blur layer underneath, so we're going to take just the blur layer at the bottom, we're going to call this side X, the orange is going to be called X, the right side is going to be y because we're going to look at equations and the dilemma then is what do we do about the middle bit? Can we get an equation that represents all of it so we can treat it all? And we can do it like this. So we call this, so b is any point on here and it is ax plus 1 minus a of y. So in other words any point in the middle of this if, say, it's a point where you've got 90% x, that means you've got 10% y. So that'll be 0.9x plus 1 minus a, right, which is 0, 1 minus 0 0.9 is 0 0.1y, so you've got 90% x and 10% y. So this, then, is a way of representing any point on here, as long as you choose a, you know, so that when a is 1, then you've got 1x there and you get 1 minus 1, so that cancels that, so there's no y, and that's a point up here. Likewise, in here, then if you've got a then is going to be 0, so there's no x because it's all the y, the cyan, 
and then you've got 1 minus 0, which is 1y. It goes back to y. So this works to represent any point there. Then we're going to combine it with the high frequency layer, for which we need an, another bit of an equation. And this equation is, is C here. So, and this represents what we did with it. Okay. So 1 minus b, so it's an inversion of this layer. So 1 minus this layer gives you the 1 minus b divided by 2 because it's half. Yeah, we got half one and half the other plus the d over 2, which is this. And d is going to be either x or y. So if a is greater than 0 0.5, a is greater than 0 0.5, we're talking about this side, yeah? So when A is 1, then we've got X. A is a half, it's going to be a bit of both in the, in the middle, and otherwise it's Y. So that represents, again, any point on this line. So that gives us an equation for this, and equation for this. So then, when we put them together with the high frequency layer, the low frequency layer, and we combine them with a blend mode of linear light, we get back to the original. The equation for linear light, which is used in any combination, is effectively B, which is the, this base layer here, plus 2 times C, and this is sometimes called the blend layer, the top layer, minus 1, and that's what we use. And then the final bit is this, which is doing it slowly, so it's not as bad as it looks. So if we take the bit where A is greater than 0 0.5, so we're using X for D, so it's only X in there as opposed to Y, everything else is the same. So we've got B, which is this AX, and we just multiply out this bracket, so it's plus 1 minus AY. So AX plus Y times 1 is Y minus ay here, so ax plus y minus ay, that's b, which is in there, then plus 2 times, 2 times, c, and c is 1 minus b, so that's 1 minus this slot here, which is the b, the same as this, divided by 2, which is that, then you've got plus x over 2, because in this case we're doing the left side, so it's x, and then the minus 1, comes from the minus one up there. Now we just multiply out these things here, that two times here, because inside here you've got divided by two and divided by two, so you just effectively, those twos all cancel each other out. So you've got ax plus y, y minus ay here, plus this bit here, this bit here, plus the x, which is that x there, because it's half x multiplied by two, and then the minus one carries on down. Now we just multiply that minus out, which means change the sign of everything in there, and we end up with this one. And then we just look at things here. You've got plus one, minus one, so the numbers disappear. Ax minus Ax, so the Axs disappear. And you've got the Y minus Y, so the Y disappears. And then you've got minus Ay plus Ay, so that disappears. So the only thing left is X. So in other words, on the left-hand side, all you've got left is X, which is the orange colour. And it includes down this bit here, but only up to that midpoint. Because when you cross the midpoint, then you, this flips, and then instead of X, you've got Y. And this whole thing ripples down the same way, and you end up with Y. Whew! There you go. That's how frequency separation works. I hope you found that interesting. It was a heck of a job to figure it all out. And I hope it's right. It looks right to me. Let me know if it's not, but I'm pretty confident. Thank you very much for watching.